Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, something I read today, it says, God still speaks to men today. The problem is, few people will take the time to listen. Boy, does that, uh, does that ring true. And uh, I'm as guilty of that as anybody. So, all right, uh, let's take a look. This is going to be my commentary on the book of Hosea. Now, there was a king called Hosea, and there's a prophet called Hosea. We're talking about the prophet. He is what they call the minor prophets, not because of the importance of the message, but rather the size of the book. So let's turn your King James Bible to chapter 1, and we'll get started. I'm going to read an excerpt from a commentary on Hosea as an introduction. So let's get going. All right, the word Hosea, the name means salvation. He was a prophet to the northern kingdom of Israel. The main tribe in Israel was called Ephraim. So Ephraim and the northern kingdom of Israel is kind of synonymous. Synonymous. Now, the nation was prosperous and growing. However, spiritually, they were corrupt and they were considered spiritually adultery against the people. The people were against the Lord, right? So, but uh, God hated the sins of his people. He pronounced that judgment was coming. But yet, in the end, God's love for Israel was going to be proclaimed. Hosea, Joshua, and Jesus are all derived from a similar Hebrew root word. But, uh, like, Hosea means salvation, but uh, Joshua and Jesus also uh, has the meaning of, uh, well, some people say Yahweh is salvation. Others say Yehovah, Yahweh, I don't know. So, Hosea wanted Israel to know that salvation was available, but they had to turn away from their idolatry and turn back to the Lord. Now, uh, in this introduction, northern kingdom of Israel's last king was also called Hosea. Hosea. It has the same name as the prophet, even though their spelling is a little bit different. In the New Testament, Hosea in the Greek is rendered as O-C-E-E. O -S -E -E. So, let's take a look at the book of Hosea. Let's go to chapter 1 and verse 1. The word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Beri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. You see, people, Judah and Israel had different kings. So when you hear your demon nominational preacher tell you they're the same people, well, Kind of, but, you know, that's like saying that um, during the American Civil War, the North and the fight, uh, South were fighting each other. Yeah, they're all Americans, but you can't call a uh, New York Yankee somebody, you know, a, a Southerner. I mean, you know, they're just, they're different. Yeah, they're all Americans. 
you know, Judah was part of Israel, but the northern kingdom of Israel separated from Judah and went into apostasy much quicker. We're going to get into that. So, Verse 2, the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, go, take unto thee a wife of whoredoms, a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms, for the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. Now, was the Lord telling Hosea to take a, a wife that was sexually unclean or spiritually unclean, or both? I'm not, I don't know. Uh, your guess is as good as mine, so what can I tell you? But that was to be a representation. Hosea was kind of a shadow of the Lord being married to his bride, Israel, who was at the very least spiritually unfaithful and adulterous. I mean, that's the theme of this book. Verse 3. So he, Hosea, so he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblaim, which conceived and bare him a son. Verse 4. And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel. For yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and will cause the cease, the kingdom of the house of of Israel. And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. Now, you can read about Jehu. He was a captain in the army of Israel, and one of the prophets anointed him as king, and he got rid of Jezebel who was the wife of Ahab. Ahab, King Ahab of Israel, was one of the worst, if not the worst king that Israel ever had. And have you ever heard of, you know, she's a Jezebel? Well, yeah. And uh, I suspect she was of the Canaanite tribes. I haven't done the research to say for sure, I mean, I've read the Old Testament a number of times and listened to it on uh, cassette and CD. Yeah, cassette. Boy, that's going back, huh? But uh, Jehu got rid of the family of Ahab and got rid of his prophets of Baal, which were basically Satanists. He got rid of them. But did he do it for the Lord, out of his zeal for the Lord, or did he do it to get rid of all opposition against him from being king? You see, Jehu also fell into idolatry just a different way than Ahab did. So even though he started off doing some things that pleased the Lord, he ended up in a place that wasn't very good. All right, so know that the Lord's going to break the bow, you know, like a bow and arrow. He's going to break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. Now, if you want to read a little bit about that, let's go to 2 Kings chapter 18. We're not going to read the whole thing, but we'll start in verse 1. Now, it came to pass in the third year of Hosea, son of Elah, king of Israel. Now, you got two Hoseas here. You got the prophet and you got the king. So please remember that. Now it came to pass in the third year of Hosea, son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty and five years old when he began to reign. And he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. His mother, mother's name also was Abai, the daughter of Zechariah. 
And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Ah, he was a good king. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord according to all that David his father did. He removed the high places. Now remember, the high places is people always wanted to build that stairway to heaven, you know, like the Led Zeppelin song, the Tower of Babel. They wanted to build the high places. They wanted to be close to heaven. So they would go into the high places and perform Satanism. He removed the high places and break the images. He took all the idols and broke them up to pieces and cut down the groves and break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. Remember all the people were bit by fiery serpents in the, uh, I forget what book it's in, but it's in uh, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, or Deuteronomy. It's in one of those books, books of Moses. But there was a brazen serpent. And he, Moses held it up, and anybody that looked upon it was healed if they had the faith to look at it. But why did he break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made? For unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it, and he called it Nehushtan, I think. You know, if I pronounce some of these words wrong, please forgive me, you know. They were burning incense to the, mo the, the brazen serpent. Not the God of the brazen serpent that healed the people. I mean, I should say the God who told Moses to make the brazen serpent to heal the people. But the brazen serpent. I mean, really? You're going to burn incense to a brazen serpent and call it God? Really? So, verse 5. Now, we're talking about the God uh, of Israel, the, and we're talking about the king of Judah. It says, He trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. This guy was a good king. America could use somebody like him. Canada, too, but uh, what can I tell you? For he clave to the Lord and departed not from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord commanded Moses. All right, verse 7. And the Lord was with him. The Lord was with him. And he prospered whithersoever he went forth, and he rebelled against the king of Assyria and served him not. He smote the Philistines even unto Gaza. Some people say Gaza. And the borders thereof from the tower of the watchman to the fenced city. And it came to pass in the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Hoshea, Hosea, son of Elon, king of Israel, that Shalman. Nazar, king of Assyria, came up against Samaria and besieged it. Now remember, Samaria was the capital of the northern kingdom of Israel. Jerusalem was the capital of the kingdom of Ju uh, Judah. Verse 10, And at the end of three years they took it. So the king of Assyria made a siege against Samaria, and at the end of three years they took it, even in the sixth year of Hezekiah, that is the ninth year of Hoshea, king of Israel, Samaria was taken. And the king of Assyria did carry away Israel unto Assyria and put them in Hala and in Habor by the river Gozan and, the, and in the cities of the Medes. Now, if you read the book of Daniel... Uh, the Medes were, you know, part of the Babylonians who came in under King Nebuchadnezzar and took away Judah years later. So why did this happen? Verse 12. Why did God let the Assyrians take 
the capital, Samaria, away from northern Israel. Why? Verse 12. Because they obeyed not, because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord their God, but transgressed his covenant, and all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded, and would not hear them nor do them. Oh, let's see. Now, in the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah, did Sennacherib, king of Assyria, come up against all the fenced cities of Judah and took them? So, the Assyrians not only took Israel, but they took some of the cities of Judah, too. But uh, they never took Jerusalem. Now, something you should know. When the Assyrian Empire collapsed because of the Babylonians, the children of Israel took off because the Assyrian army that was guarding them went to go fight against the Babylonians. So when they saw the soldiers gone, they ran away because they didn't want to be the slaves of the Assyrians. They, you know, they knew all the soldiers were off fighting the Babylonians and they thought, well, you know, if the Assyrians are victorious, they're going to come back and we're going to be their slaves. So they took off. And uh, some people say that uh, they went to the north. And if you look north of Israel and Syria, what's there? Europe. So there you go. In 2 Kings chapter 17, Verse 5, Then the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land and went up to Samaria and besieged it three years. In the ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Hala and in Habor by the river Gozan and in the city of the Medes. For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned. The children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods and walked in the statutes of the heathen whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel and the kings of Israel, which they had made. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go back to Hosea. Verse 1, chapter, I'm sorry, chapter 1, verse 5. And it came to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. Well, that's what happened. The Assyrians came, they came, they saw, they conquered, and they took the people as slaves and carried away all their wealth, all their gold and silver, and took the people and made them their slaves. Verse 6. So here it is, Hosea. Uh, says that uh, he, uh, well, Hosea had relations with his wife. In verse 6, we read, And she conceived again and bare a daughter. And God said unto him, Call her name Loruhama, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly Take them away. And that's what the Assyrians did. Verse 7. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah and will save them by the Lord their God and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. Now, there is an account of the Assyrians besieged Jerusalem and God killed them. <laughs> yeah. Because at this time, Judah was had a good king, and he was faithful to the Lord, and the Lord honored him. Didn't we read that about uh, how good of a king he was? He said there was none before him and none after him. Oh, yeah. All right, so verse 8. Now, when she had weaned Loruhama, she conceived and bare a son. Then said God, 
call his name Loami, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. Boy, that's some pretty strong words. For you are not my people, and I will not be your God. Woo. So God's pronouncing judgment. But in verse 10, we read, Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor number. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. Now where's this? In Israel. I believe Jerusalem. That in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, who's that going to be? Christ. And they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. Now, in Romans chapter 25 and 26, Paul writes, As he saith also in Osi, that's the Greek rendering of Hosea, O-S-E-E, -E, As he saith also in Osi, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and, per love, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 1. They say, If a man put away his wife, and she go from him, and become another man's, Shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot, a whore, but thou hast played, uh, but thou, Israel, but thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places, and see where thou hast not been lying with. In other words, they lay down in a spiritual adultery, right? In the ways hast thou sat for them as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Therefore the showers rain, therefore the showers have been withholden, and there hath been no latter rain, and thou hadst a whore's forehead. Thou refusest to be ashamed." Wilt thou not from this time cry unto me, My father, thou art the guide of my youth? Will he reserve his anger forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou couldest. The Lord said all, uh, also unto me in the days of Josiah the king. Now Josiah was a good king, people. Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? Well, Josiah was a good king in Judah. And they're asking, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She has gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. And I said, After she had done all these things, Turn thou unto me. The Lord's asking them, Return to me. Turn thou unto me. But she returned not, and her treacherous sister Judah saw it. Verse 8. Listen carefully. And I saw, when for 
all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery. I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. God said, I've had it with northern Israel. He wrote her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. So Judah saw what God did to Israel what, and what she had done, but she didn't fear the Lord. And she went and did the same exact things. Verse 9. And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart, but feignedly saith the Lord. And the Lord said unto me, The backsliding Israel hath justified herself more than treacherous Judah. So God divorced Israel, but Judah was even worse than Israel had after he divorced her. Verse 12. Go and proclaim these words toward the north, and say, Return, thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord. Praise the Lord for that. For I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. And I will give you pastors, you know, like ministers, clergy, pastors. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And it shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increased in the land in those days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. They shall say no more, The Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. Neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done any more. At that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all the nations shall be gathered unto it, to the name of the Lord to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. They're going to come together out of the land of the north. What's north of Israel? Europe, people. Verse 19, But I said, How shall I put thee among the children and give thee a pleasant land, a goodly heritage of the hosts of nations? And I said, Thou shalt call me my father and shall not turn away from me. Surely as a wife treacherously departeth from her husband, so have ye dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplications of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their way, and they have forgotten the Lord their God. Doesn't this sound like America and Europe today? Oh yeah. But God makes a plea in verse 22. Return, ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills. Yeah, you're not going to find salvation in the hills, people. And from the multitude of mountains, truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. For shame hath devoured the labor of our fathers from our youth, their flocks and their herds, their sons and their daughters. We lie down in our shame, 
and our confusion covereth us. For we have sinned against the Lord our God, we and our fathers from our youth, even unto this day, and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. All right, remember in Jeremiah 3, 8, God said he divorced Israel, gave her a bill of divorcement. Well, let's go to Jeremiah 31, 31. Chapter 31, verse 31. See, the Lord has anger, but he's a merciful Lord. And, well, let's read. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant, a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. See, Israel and Judah, they broke the covenant. The Lord didn't. Which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts, in their inward parts, and write it in their hearts, and will be their God, and they shall be my people. Didn't Jesus always tell the people something interesting? Well, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 8, verse 10, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. Hebrews 10, 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. Oh, yeah. So, back to uh, Jeremiah 31. Verse 34. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Boy, that's, boy, the Lord's going to have to forget a lot of things to forget my sin. Verse 35. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinance, ordinances of the moon and the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Thus saith the Lord, If heaven above can be measured, and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, saith the Lord. So, so just remember, people, in Romans 9, 25 and 26, Paul writes, As he saith also in O.C., I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall, be, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Now, why would Paul be writing this in the book of Romans? Because the Romans were probably divorced Israel that God promised with the, the promise of the new covenant. You know, the, they, were, they were called not my people, 
But now in faith in Christ, they were called the people of God. At least that's my ta take on it. I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't think so. So that is going to be the end of part one of the commentary of Host, the book of Hosea, chapter 1. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.